Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of erectile dysfunction due to venogenic cause. In my practice, I commonly get patients of erectile dysfunction with arterogenic causes. But this time, I am going to show you a case of venogenic cause. A 42-year-old male patient came with erectile dysfunction. He was sent to us to do a penile Doppler to record the pre- and post papaverine injection states. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. I'll go with the step by step that will be easy for you to diagnose your cases. This is the flaccid state. You can see the transverse section of the shaft of the penis. These two are the corpus cavernosa. This is the corpus spongiosum. And the surrounding covering is the tunica albuginea. You see tiny echogenic walled vessels. These are the cavernosal arteries. Here's again another picture. You can see the corpus cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum in transverse sections. This is the lung section of the corpus cavernosa. Echogenic walls of cavernosal artery is visualized here. There is no definite calcific or fibrous plaques present. We have measured the cavernosal arteries and they are around 0.5 mm in diameter. Here is the sample we have collected from the cavernosal arteries. It's usually very difficult in flaccid state to get these waves. So reduce the PRF or even you can use power Doppler to see these waves. The systolic velocities were around 5 to 6 cm per second and there was no forward diastolic flow. So the resistive index was 1. So before injection the penis is flaccid. Both corpus cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum appear homogeneous with normal cavernosal arteries. Now we have used the papaverine injection. This is the ampoule that we have used. It is the papaverine hydrochloride of 30 mg per 2 ml. We have injected 1 ml in each corpus cavernosum with insulin series at the proximal parts. Here is the picture of the corpus cavernosa after the injection. You can see ecogenic foci here. Here is the still picture just after the injection. So we have confirmed that the drug was injected at the proper site though we already have used ultrasound while injecting. Now just after 5 minutes the penis got erected and you can see this is the cavernosal artery and it's quite dilated. You even can see the pulsation without any Doppler. You can see the sinusoids are filled with blood. There's some anechoic areas within. Now the vessels have become now around 1 mm with good amount of flow. We have took sample. Peak systolic velocity was around 20 to 30 cm per second and the diastolic flow is increasing. You can see the notches here. So after 5 minutes the penis got erected but it was not rigid at all. There was increase in systolic and diastolic flow velocities in the cavernosal arteries. Here you can see the picture 10 minutes after the injection and the vessels are very prominent right now. You can see the helicin arteries here. They are also getting prominent. This is the right cavernosal artery. And here you can see the left cavernosal artery with a good amount of flow towards the sinusoids. Here's the picture. You can see two vessels here with good amount of internal flow. The vessels become around 1.7 mm in diameter right now. And the velocities got almost static about 20 to 30 cm per second with the still presence of diastolic flow. So after 10 minutes, we have got an erected penis but still not rigid. There was increase in systolic and diastolic flow velocities in cavernosal arteries. Now let's check after 15 minutes. Here you still can see prominent cavernosal arteries. The diameter is almost similar to the previous one. 
but the systolic and diastolic velocities got increased. As the pixastolic velocities have crossed the limit of 30 cm per second, so we can say that there is no arteriogenic cause of erectile dysfunction. Now what we need is to see the reduction of diastolic flow in this patient to see this patient as a normal one. So after 15 minutes, there was a still erected penis but not rigid one. It will get rigid and at that time the diastolic flow will be absent or reversed. But it didn't happen after 15 minutes. Now there is increased systolic flow and persistent increased diastolic flow. Now let's finish the exam after the 20 minutes scan. Now after 20 minutes, you can see the venous sinusoids are showing blood filled spaces. You can see prominent arteries also. The diameter is almost similar to the previous ones. And the peak systolic velocity is slightly reduced than the 15 minutes scan, but it is still increased. And if you look at the diastolic flow, it's almost similar to the previous ones. It's not getting decreased. The diastolic flow velocities are still around 10 cm per second. It should get reduced below 5 cm per second by now. After 20 minutes, the penis is still erected but didn't get rigid. There is a still increased systolic flow but there is persistent increased diastolic flow. This persistent increased diastolic flow for this long period indicates that there is a venous leakage and it suggests the venogenic cause of erectile dysfunction in this patient. Now the take home message. The normal waveform of cavernosal arteries get changed during the onset of erection. We have six different phases. Firstly, you will see the monophasic flow in flaccid state with apparently no diastolic component. Then we will see the increase in diastolic flow. Then a notch will appear at the end of systole. We have seen almost all the waves like this. So it was stopped at the phase 2 in this patient. The penis will get rigid and the outflow of the emissary vein will get stopped. So the end diastolic flow will disappear now and then there will be a reversal of diastolic flow. And lastly, at the rigid direction period, you will see the reduction of the systolic peak which we didn't see here. Let's talk a little about the venogenic importance. So the cause of this venous leakage is actually unknown, but it is assumed that the tunica albuginea stress beyond the normal limit. So it cannot obliterate the emissary veins draining the sinusoids during the erection. So due to this inadequate compression, the venous outflow will be continuous. You are giving blood towards the sinusoid and the blood will go outside the sinusoid by the emissary veins. So the penis will not get rigid. This venous leakage is suspected when there is persistence of high diastolic flow above 5 cm per second in cavernosal arteries. So summarize the case, in case of venogenic erectile dysfunction, you will see the ineffective vena occlusion and there will be continuous outflow of the blood from the sinusoids. So you can't hold the blood within the sinusoid and there won't be any rigid erection. We'll confirm it after the pepavirin injection and there will be persistence of diastolic flow above 5 cm per second. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more cases of penile Doppler, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and obviously try to visit imagingstudy.com for more cases. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.